What's going on guys? I'm here today on Monday. Most of the week, three games in the NFL season are in the books. Now we have the Packers and the Seahawks tonight, but I wanted to take some time today to recap, of course, the Minnesota Vikings victory yesterday over the San Francisco 49ers, a game in which pretty much nobody gave the Vikings a shot. In my own prediction, I went with the odds and I went with the Niners. It was a very tough team and I picked the Niners over the Vikings by, I think, like 11 points in that one. It was actually a pretty close score, but just about flipped for the way the actual game was played. But I had not lost all hope in my team for this week's game against San Francisco. I did expect the 49ers to come out and win, but because I thought they had a, such a good matchup against the Vikings, I mean, Vernon Davis alone against that Vikings secondary, I thought would really tear him up a bit. And Frank Gordon, always a great running back, and the Vikings have a good rush defense, not as good as it used to be when Pat Williams was still a Viking. But I knew that the Vikings would be able to limit the big plays from the 49ers when hopefully help their offense stay in this game. And I thought it would come down to the offense's execution against that tremendous run defense and that great pass rush that the, that the 49ers have. And for the most part, the Vikings did everything right yesterday. I mean... Christian Ponder, he had less passing yards than Alex Smith, but running the ball, the Vikings stuck to their game. They had a balanced offense the whole way through, and even when the rushing game got off to a slow start, it was picking up towards the second half and into the second half, and Ponder played probably his best game as a Minnesota Viking and did not even throw for 200 yards. But the Vikings overall, this was a dominant win. They did not get lucky in this game, did not come down to some late game heroics. The Vikings held the lead from the first quarter about seven minutes into the game, and never looked back from there. And I would say the Vikings outplayed the 49ers on defense, on offense, and the Vikings were a much better coach team with a better game plan for this particular game. Now you can say the 49ers came out flat, they underestimated the Vikings, if they had to play a second time the 49ers would destroy them, but I would say the Vikings won this game because of the way they executed as a football team. Regardless of the way the 49ers were playing, the Vikings pass protected great, Ponder was throwing on the run. You can't say the 49ers were flat and not give credit to Christian Ponder for this game. Ponder was extremely accurate out of the pocket, that first touchdown pass to Kyle Rudolph was a phenomenal Phenomenal play, a great throw to the end zone. The second one, not so much because he had a wide open Adrian Peterson that wasn't a very good decision, but he had the 6 6 Kyle Rudolph make a great play, which was an arguable pass interference call. I think I would have actually thrown the flag there in that situation, but nonetheless, it was still two nice touchdown passes from Christian Ponder. And the Vikings just had a lot of energy in this game. They executed well. Their game plan was phenomenal, and Leslie Frazier really showed that he can be a solid coach with this performance today. I mean, he had that team ready. Bill Musgrave, the offensive coordinator, had a great game plan. And scripted. I mean, I was so happy when I saw the Vikings. Well, I didn't see it first off. I saw it later after the game was over, but I was listening to it. I was really impressed, not only with the execution, but the play calls when the announcers were explaining the formations and the Vikings went down 80 plus yards, scored a touchdown, got the ball back, and then came out empty backfield and offense. The Vikings never let off the gas pedal in this game. That's part of why they hung on to win. They did not play a soft cover two and give up 20 yards of separation and just let the, let basically what the Andrew Luck did last week with the Colts. I mean, the Vikings, they locked down on defense, and they were lucky, though, that the San Francisco 49ers didn't take any shots downfield. That was part of why I think that the Vikings were definitely out coaching the Niners in this game, because the Niners did not exploit the Vikings' weaknesses enough. And now the Vikings, they have a good rush defense, but the Niners have a good offensive line. And I knew the Vikings weren't going to let Gore bust off a 30-yard touchdown or a 40-yard run. Gore's longest run of the day was 11 yards, but he still ran the ball 12 times for 63. 12 carries to a guy who was getting 4 bucks a pop, and in a game where they were never completely out of it. The Vikings never held a 3-score lead in this game. They could have kept running the ball in the first 3 quarters and been pretty comfortable, but instead... I think they made Alex Smith duel with Christian Ponder too much. I mean, they both threw 35 passes, and Smith has better numbers in the day minus the interception, and Ponder had the extra touchdown, one more than Alex Smith, but Ponder played better than Alex Smith did, and Smith did make some nice passes. He was fairly accurate for the most part. I mean, he only had 11 incompletions, but there were some throws on third down that he was not very accurate with, whereas Ponder was very effective on third down. The Vikings, they had a better third down efficiency percentage by 10%, and they had more total first downs and the Vikings just their balanced offense was why they were able to move down the field I mean Adrian Peterson finally got it going late he started off slow but he ends up in this game with 86 rushing yards on 25 carries and one of the most telling things about the Minnesota Vikings in this game is that they put up 24 points 
against one of the best defenses in the NFL, and Adrian Peterson accounted for less than 100 yards on the ground and zero touchdowns overall. He had 21 yards receiving, and I believe the Vikings had three drives of 80 yards or more, so it was a very good day for the Vikings offense, one of their best in a long time, and I think the Niners offense is what kept them from making this game more interesting, because the Vikings, first of all, they played very good defense in this game, but they were not challenged enough. The, the Niners did not run the ball with Frank Gore enough. If he gets 10 more carries in this game, he might have ended up making a lot bigger of an impact, maybe would have busted off a bigger run that I did not expect him to have, but even with all the passing that the Niners were doing, they weren't stretching the field. They threw the ball deep to Vernon Davis one time. It was like a 20-yard pass, and it was a great play. It was a great throw by Alex Smith. I mean, he can make some nice throws downfield, and the Vikings have trouble defending the deep ball, and I can't believe that was not exploited in this week with Mario Manningham's speed or Vernon Davis' size more. Davis had one deep ball thrown to him. He made the catch. They never went back to that play again, whereas in week one, the Vikings got beat by Cecil Shorts. In week two, they got beat by Reggie Wayne, and this week, it was a tale of an untested Vikings defense, which maybe made them look better than they really were, but still the Vikings, they were very good. Chad Greenway had maybe the best game of his NFL career. He had over 12 tackles, I think, and he had two sacks, and the Vikings did not give up their yards after the catch. The only guy breaking tackles yesterday, here's the kicker, it was Frank Gore, and they only gave him the ball 12 times. So I look at those offensive play calling mistakes, I would call them, as part of why the Niners lost yesterday, as well as their stupid penalties they had. They had three or four personal fouls, which are pretty much always really dumb penalties. The Vikings had one penalty yesterday. It was holding, whereas the Niners, when they had some really costly penalties, Alex Smith had a late interception, and the game ended with a Jared Allen sack. The perfect way for the Vikings to cap off this game. Jared Allen getting his first sack of the season, followed by Christian Ponder in the victory formation. So it was a great day for Minnesota Vikings football. Offense, defense, coaching, very exceptional. But they need to play like this more often, especially outside of the Metrodome. I mean, it's great to play good in your home stadium, but the Vikings need to go out this week. If they go out and beat the Detroit Lions and beat them handedly, this team will be a 3-1 team in first place in the division. So the Vikings need to play like this more often. They had a great game plan, but they have to show up like this every week with this intensity, this type of execution, and the coaches have to become this prepared on a more regular basis, not against, not just against teams that are the best in the NFL, but against every team they play if they want to be a contending team or if they want to have some success going into next season. But anyways, guys, it couldn't have been much better for the Minnesota Vikings. So many good things to take away from this week, including the play of Chris. Christian Ponder, whom I think should be a candidate for NFC Offensive Player of the Week. And now looking into next week, the Minnesota Vikings get Jerome Simpson now for the first time in a Vikings uniform, a field stretcher that hopefully can add a new dynamic to the Vikings offense that has already played pretty impressively thus far. And now for the San Francisco 49ers, I'm not too worried about this loss for them. It was a wake-up call against a team that played very effectively and a team that isn't as bad as everybody thinks they are. The Vikings are a pretty good team, and we're seeing them come together now cohesively as Christian Ponder develops and this team grows together. The Vikings still have a long way to go to being a playoff team, but they are better than a 3-13 team from a year ago. And the Niners this week, they have the New York Jets, who are now without Darrell Rivas for the whole season with a torn ACL. I am already predicting a 49ers victory. Victory. They are going to be prepared against the Jets, I believe, and they're going to be an angry team looking to really make a statement next week. So anyways, guys, that is my recap of the Minnesota Vikings victory over the San Francisco 49ers, a great game for Minnesota Vikings fans, and I'll be back this week with some more NFL-related videos, maybe recap the Packers and Seahawks game, and of course have my picks and predictions for week four. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section on this football game between the Niners and the Vikings, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.